Today, I'll be talking on hepatitis C virus, its genome, and the host so dramatic oncogenic signaling pathway that I just finished in the class. Oh, but before we carry it away, let me warn you, this video might be a lad longer than your average Instagram reel. So grab your coffee or you could always hit that watch later button and save it for an exam day. Your call. Let's start. Namaste. Welcome to Bit Science. Unlock the secrets of life and technology with our comprehensive biology and computer science education. Hepatitis C virus is a spherical, enveloped, positive-stranded, single-stranded RNA virus with a diameter of 40 to 80 nanometer. The nucleocapsid with isohedral symmetry consists of genomic RNA and many copies of core proteins. The nucleocapsid is surrounded by a host cell-derived lipid bilayer envelope in which envelope glycoproteins E1 and E2 are embedded. Coproteins and E1, E2 envelope glycoproteins are major protein components of the virion. A single precursor protein contains 3020 amino acids synthesized from the virus genome. The genome contains a long open reading frame flanked by highly conserved 5 UTR, untranslated region, and 3 UTR regions. And CV genome has structural and non structural proteins, both. So let's talk about structural protein first, under which we have the core proteins. So HCV core protein is highly basic RNA binding protein that makes up the viral nucleocapsid and is released as a 191 amino acid. Core protein may adversely affect the inhibition of natural killer cells. I hope you know what are those. If not, please go and watch the video again on natural killer cells. By increasing the expression of major histocompatibility complex class 1. Uh, it has three distinct regions, the N-terminal hydrophilic domain or 120 amino acid, which is D1, the C-terminal hydrophobic domain of about 50 amino acid D2, and single peptide domain of 20 amino acids D3. So let's uh, talk about what is the function and how they are involved. So D1 uh, is predicted to be involved in RNA binding and nuclear localization. Uh, D2 have a role in hepatosteatosis. D3 functions as a signal transducer. The core protein can also be translocated to the nucleus. It regulates the transcription of cellular genes, pro-oncogens, and has apoptotic and anti-apoptotic functions. It also has a role in suppressing hepatitis B virus replication. Next, comes as envelope glycoproteins or envelope glycoproteins, how do you pronounce it? E1 and E2 glycoproteins are major components of the virion envelope and are required for virus entry and fusion. E1 and E2 are type 1 transmembrane glycoproteins and have a wide variety of functions, including membrane attachment, endoplasmic reticular localization and virus packaging. Now let's come to non-structural proteins, which are very, very important. First come as a protein P7, which is an integral membrane protein that acts as a calcium ion channel necessary for the efficient recruitment and release of proliferating virus. Protein NS2 play a role in virion packaging. Protein NS3, a serine protease. And it is possible for the virus to escape from the natural cellular antiviral defense mechanism. Protein NS4A is a cofactor of NS3 serine protease. It places NS3 protease on intracellular stabilization against proteolytic degradation and activates protease activity. Protein NS4B has the ability to induce the formation of specialized membrane folds also called membranous webs that serve as scaffold for the HCV replication complex. Protein NS by way, it plays a major role in interferon resistance by inhibiting double-stranded RNA 
activated protein kinase are induced by interferon which is important component of the cellular antiviral and antiproliferative immune system it also takes part in viral replication packaging release of hcv particles protein ns5p possess rna dependent rna polymerase activity and play an essential role for the viral replication now we'll understand the pathways and how these proteins are involved we will understand the oncogenic pathway of hcv virus hcv infection can lead to cancer by disrupting various cellular processes in the body it affects how cells survive multiply become inflated form blood vessels and specialize into different types hcv tricks the body's control mechanism alternating the activity of genes that regulate cell growth division Membrane receptors play a significant role in cellular signaling. These receptors include TGFR1, TGF beta receptors, epidermal growth factor receptors, Fresnel receptors. In our discussion, we will explore each of these receptors and their involvement in the HCV signaling pathway. HCV may affect the binding of TGF beta to its receptor on the cell surface, disrupting the initiation of TGF beta signaling SMAD activation HCV can alter the activation of SMAD protein downstream of TGF beta receptors this means that even if TGF beta binds to its receptor the subsequent activation of SMAD protein may be impaired HCV may interfere with the ability of SMAD protein to regulate gene expression in the nucleus this disruption can lead to dysregulation of genes involved in the process such as cell growth differentiation and apoptosis tgm beta can also trigger a process called emt in liver cells this is when cell change from one type to another and it's important for things like development but sometimes it can also help cancers to spread in the body when hcv infects the cell it messes with the normal way our gene are controlled this can happen in a way different ways firstly a protein called ns5a as we all discussed is a part of hcv can keep an important protein called p53 stuck in the wrong part of the cell the cytoplasm this prevents another protein called p21 from doing its job which is to stop cells from growing too much i hope you know what is the role of p53 and p21 if not you can comment down below and i'll put an answer another protein made by hcv called ns5p also does pretty the same thing it traps another important protein called prb in the cytoplasm this frees up another protein called e2f to make gene that help cells grow Additionally another protein made by hcv called the core protein moves from the cytoplasm to the nucleus of the cell therefore it messes with the signaling pathway called the transforming growth factor beta pathway by interacting with another protein called smad this interference can affect how cells respond to signal that tell them to grow or stop growing hcv utilizes egfr and mapk signaling pathway during its entry into the host cells these pathways help the virus to attach to and enter the cells facilitating its infection process hcv encoded proteins such as ns5a and the core protein target egfr and mapk signaling to promote the virus own replication and survival by manipulating these pathways hcv can create an involvement within infected cells that is favorable for its growth and persistence both ns5a and the core protein have been shown to activate another signaling pathway called the signal transducer and the activator of transcription 3 strat3 strat3 is a transcription factor that regulates the expression of genes involved in inflammation cell proliferation and survival The activation of STAT3 by HCV-encoded proteins contributes to the virus ability to invade the 
host immune system and promotes its own survival. In a spy way, allocoprotein can activate STAT3 through both direct and indirect mechanisms. For example, they may directly interact with STAT or inhibit molecules like suppressor of cytokine signaling 3, SOX3, which normally acts to suppress at 3 activation. Following its translocation to the nucleus, STAT3 strongly promotes a pro-inflammatory environment in cooperation with nuclear factor kappa light chain enhancer of activated B cells, NFKB signaling. Further, STAT3 and NFKB together with PI3K induce hypoxia-inducible factor 1-alpha, HIF1-alpha stabilization, which mediates the transcription of several pro-angiogenic factors. HCV impairs cell differentiation programs by manipulating WNT and not signaling pathway. When WNT ligands attach to a receptor called result, it stops another protein called beta-catenin from being broken down. This causes beta-catenin to build up and move into the nucleus, where it activates gene that makes cells grow. Changes in the WNT pathway are common in liver cancer, often leading to beta-catenin buildup. And as 5A induces a sustained WNT signaling activation through PI3K, a KT axis. Absence of MZD stimulation causes degradation of cytoplasmic beta catenine by complex that consists of axins APC and two serin threonine kinase, JSK3 beta and CK1. Components of WNT signaling are frequently mutated in liver cancer. Isolated expression of NS5K has been reported to directly promote. WNT signaling by its interaction with PI3K and subsequently activation of AKT. This induces the fossilization and inhibition of glycogen synthase kinase 3, a key component of beta catenine degradation complex. NS3 stimulates downstream components of notch pathway by the recruitment of CREB binding protein complex on SNF2 related. CBP activator, repressing cell differentiation program. So as you can see this entire pathway, it is a little bit complex and I am not sure how much you have understood, but I would always ask you to pause the video and try to understand it in case you have any difficulty understanding or if you want me to make more detailed videos on this particular topic, you can just comment below. Apart from that, this there are many other different signaling pathways available. In case if you want to know any particular pathway, you can always comment below and I can make a video on that. And thank you for watching.